the symbols here. Let's don't get too much tied up in the symbols, but in, in uh, because it, they, these symbols uh, represent what he did, what Christ did, not in what we have to do. Now, I'm going to be teaching, and, and I did this the last time, and y'all followed along with me. I don't think you got it, but I want, to be, I want to teach it again, that I teach that there is two doors to the Christian life. And we're talking about reconciliation. There are two parts to reconciliation. And I want you to follow this, because this is what I'm going over the next four weeks, this is what I'm trying to convince you of, that there's going to be two doors to the Christian life. When we're saved, we enter that first door. Then, after God gets His Spirit within us and starts working in us, He gets where He can now. He is now in a position to work with us, right? He, his Spirit within, is within us, and now He can start working with us and leading us as babes in Christ to bring us into that place of maturity and bring us into that place where the Hebrews is talking about, into that place of full maturity. And those are the two doors. And we talked about those two doors before, at the Red Sea and at Jordan. And they both are different now. And I want you, this is the most, this is the heart of this lesson now, is to, for you to see that there's more, more to the Christian life than just being cleansed of our sins and then sitting in a church pew. That's, God's got more to just going to heaven when you die. That's, God is getting you in a place when he saves you and puts his spirit within you. God has now bringing you into a place where he can take with his word and lead you into his, the, the life that he wants you to have. He's leading. Remember that Romans 12, 1 and 2. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the... What, this is, why is that put way over in Romans? Because God is going to try to lead us. He, after we're saved, then all of this work that God is doing now in our lives is to lead us to this point of total consecration to Him. And until we get to that place where we're totally His and we're dead to self, then we haven't been reconciled. He has been reconciled because He was reconciled with the blood, right? But we haven't been. He hadn't brought us yet to that place of reconciliation. That he wants us. And this is what we're going to be trying to look at in these next few weeks. <clears throat> Paul did not put Romans 12, 1 and 2 at the beginning. When we try to someday, sometimes in our preaching, try to make people bring Romans 12, 1 and 2 into salvation, that's too early. You can't bring people to, to, to die to themselves before they even know what any of this means. Because God has to lead us down that path. Remember that when the children of Israel were come out of the promised land, they didn't immediately go into the promised land, did they? I mean out of Egypt, out of the sin. I'm sorry, bondage. They didn't immediately go from bondage into the promised land, did they? They had to spend some time in the wilderness. Because what was God doing in that wilderness? getting them ready to go across Jordan because they weren't ready. They had a lot to learn in between coming out of Egypt and going into the promised land. And that's the reason that we've got a lot to learn from the time that we're saved. There's a lot to learn about God before we can go into that place that he wants us. And this is what I'm trying to lead you through in these studies is that place where we are totally consecrated to Him. We don't know how to get there in the first place. We don't even know how to get in here. 
when we're born again, we wouldn't have any idea. Ask the person how. There is two, you remember that when I went back in sin, we talked about sin. There's two basic needs of man. This is what God's dealing with here. What are those two basic needs of man? If we, if we forget this, that we, we, when we talked about sin, what are the two needs? Anybody remember? This is so important that we remember this. We need to be cleansed of our sins. That's what happens at this first, at this first brazen altar here. This is where we're cleansed of our sins, made ready for heaven. God's Spirit comes and dwells in us. And all of this basic stuff that we've talked about, that's what happens there. But what, what else does man need to be? He needs, he needs to be delivered from who he is. This is what we're not teaching. We're not delivering man from who he is. We're leaving him in the same state he was when he was lost. In other words, we've got Christians that have never been anything but cleansed of their sins, but they're, they're stagnant now because they're still in the wilderness. They haven't been led into that place where God wants them. They have not dealt with who they are. <coughs> and that's what God, that's the hardest part for God. Not to deal with what we have done. He handled that with the blood and put that out of the way. And he's got all that settled. Now he's got to deal with the factory that's putting out all of these sins, right? And until he deals with that and gets that part reconciled, then we're not
about us going into this door here, not going, not being saved. Because that's the hard part. You remember we talked about carnal Christians. Where is a carnal Christian? Somebody living in the wilderness, right? They won't go on. They're still living like the world. Have no time for God. How much time does a carnal person spend on his knees? <laughs> Why? Because he is capable of living his own life. I don't need God. Because he has not been reconciled. He has not come to that place of reconciliation. And that's what we're coming to. I want us to look. Uh, I'm going to see how much time we have. Uh, Three, four, Him, how he received 